In this video, I'm going to review variance inflation factors, which we can use to assess multicollinearity multi problems in multiple linear regression models. I'll use the blood pressure data set to illustrate. And first thing I'm going to do is create a matrix plot or a scatter plot matrix of all the data. So I select all the data and click OK. And then what we have here is a series of scatter plots. So for example, in the top row, we have blood pressure on the vertical axis. And then for this plot, age on the horizontal axis, blood pressure and weight, blood pressure and BSA and so on. And so all these plots here are with the predictors because blood pressure here is the response variable. And then everything down here is just a mirror image of everything up here. So I can just focus on this top half or this bottom half. Either one is fine. You don't need to look at both. What I want to look at is amongst the predictors, are there any pairs of predictors that have a very strong linear association? And if they do, those two predictors, it might be problematic to include both of them in a multiple linear regression model. So for example, this plot here has weight on the vertical axis, BSA on the horizontal axis, and you can see quite a strong linear association between those two variables. So including weight and BSA together in a model might be problematic. Similarly, let's see, weight and pulse is quite a strong correlation as well. So we can also look at those correlations. If we go to basic statistics and correlation, and same thing, we'll just look at all the variables. And so we can see, for example, weight and BSA has a, have a correlation of 0.875. So that's very high. And then, what else is kind of on the high side? Uh, weight and pulse, 0.659. That's kind of on the high side as well. Okay, and then there's a few others that are kind of middling, maybe age and pulse. Um, everything else is pretty low though. Okay, so those are the ones we probably need to worry about. Weight, uh, BSA, pulse, maybe. Okay, so let's fit a model and see what happens. So we'll fit BP as the response variable, and then let's put all six predictors in the model. And we'll go down to the correlation, sorry, the coefficients table, this one here. And there's a column that Minitab puts in automatically, VIF, which stands for variance inflation factor. And I'll show you how these numbers are calculated in a second. But what we want to do here is identify any of these numbers that are high, particularly if any are bigger than four, and certainly if any are bigger than 10. Uh, but we can immediately see that there's a few that are bigger than four. So this one for weight is 8.42. So that's, that's a red flag there. Uh, BSA is, is above four as well, 5.33. And even pulse is above four, 4.41. So these three are all raising question marks in my head about whether there might be issues, multicollinearity issues here that we need to take care of before we really want to use this model. So at this point, um, the question arises as to what we might want to do here. Um, actually, before I get to that though, I'm gonna just show you how these numbers are calculated. So let's do the one for weight. So if I regress weight on all the other five predictors, let's do that. 
So this is just to illustrate the calculation of the variance inflation factors. It's not something that you would habitually do in an analysis. This is just for illustration. So, but let me do weight and then I'm gonna put the other five predictors in. So age, BSA, dure, pulse and stress. Okay, and the only number that I'm interested in here is R squared, 88.12%, or as a decimal, 0.8812. And now if I calculate, this is gonna be the VIF, the variance inflation factor for weight in the first model that I fit. And the way it's calculated is one divided by one minus R squared as a decimal, so 0.8812. And if I go to the worksheet, that number, that calculation should appear here. So 8.41751. Okay, so 8.41751. And let's go to my original coefficients table and look at the VIF for weight. So to for, to two decimal places, 8.42, 8.42. Okay, that's how that number is calculated. Okay, as I say, you wouldn't need to do this in an actual real life analysis because Minitap is calculating this for you, but this is how it's calculating that number. It's fitting the regression of that predictor on all the other predictors, finding what R squared is, and doing one over one minus R squared when R squared is represented as a decimal number. Okay, let's go back to think about what we should do if we discover that there's a potential multicollinearity problem. Okay, so we've got three red flags here, weight, BSA, and pulse. And so one thing we might consider here is maybe removing one or more of these problematic predictors. So the question becomes, well, which, which ones should I remove? So one criteria might be, well, remove the one with the highest variance inflation factor. Uh, but you always have to keep in mind the practical implications of what you're doing here. Okay, and if we look at the definitions, we're trying to model blood pressure using these six potential predictors. So some of these predictors are easier to measure than others. So for example, age and weight, those are very easy to measure. Body surface area, eh, not so much. Okay, that's gonna require a bit more calculation. So if I'm comparing weight and BSA, and thinking about removing one of those, I think I'm more inclined to remove BSA than weight. And then if we look at, what's the other problematic one? Pulse. So pulse, um, should I remove that one or not? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but for illustrative purposes, let me remove BSA and pulse. I'll leave weight in the model and we'll see what happens to the variance inflation factors. They're gonna change because my model is changing, uh, but we'll see if they're all below the threshold of four after I do that. So I'll fit a new regression model with blood pressure as the response, but I'm gonna take out BSA and pulse. So I'll leave age, weight, dure, and stress. Okay, and now if I look at the variance inflation factors, they're all below four. So at least from that perspective, I've, I've, I've got a more useful model because I don't have any predictors in here that are exhibiting signs of multicollinearity. Okay, so that's 
uh, an introduction to using variance inflation factors to assess multicollinearity problems in multiple linear regression models.